Thank you so much for joining us, Hillary. And congrats. We've got to talk about this. There are two wow. human Humans. beings being formed in here as we speak. Now, tell me, on a scale of one <laughs> to get me out of these damn shoes, where are we? Where are we on that scale? Well, I just hit, um, as I was saying to you, the 27 weeks. So I'm like essentially my third trimester, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling wow, you're pretty small. full. For twins? This isn't small. Uh, for twins really? in there? Yeah. I think, really? I mean, There's I. Twins in there. Did you really get a good look? I think you look amazing. <laughs> thank you. Well, I thank you. you do I look love incredible. it. Thank you. You're I love it. I love it. I just feel like I feel like women are superheroes. Yes. What our bodies do. Yeah. 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 I have such. I'm in like a whole newfound respect. I mean, I love women. I've always loved women. But now I'm like, wow. <laughs> like <laughs> this, we can do this. Yeah. Now, is there any, are you, have you experienced any unusual craving? Food. Okay. <laughs> but anything in particular? No, lots of food. Like, yeah. I eat. Well, the first 16 weeks, I had a lot of morning sickness. I didn't do any throwing up, but I ate, all I wanted was fruit. And that's not that exciting, I know. It's not like fruit pickles dipped in peanut butter or anything. Mm. But a lot of fruit. But to the point where, like, one of my co-stars, when they found out I was pregnant, was like, oh, that's why you eat 10 pomegranates a day. And right. Like 50 pears. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you have any unusual cravings when you were... I remember when I was pregnant with Apple, just really... Wanting apples? You know, funnily <laughs> enough, I did. I wanted apples, yogurt, Swiss cheese, and Baskin Robbins Jamocha Almond Fudge ice cream. That's all that's I wanted. very specific. Not at the same time. At the same time, no. spaced out. Like, that's all I wanted, yeah. I couldn't, like, I just couldn't eat anything really but fruit. And I need, know I needed protein, so I... Throw, threw in some peanut butter with my apples or something. Well, that's it. I mean, you're, how old are your kids now? Oh my gosh, I'm so past this stage. I'm so, it's so sweet. I have a college freshman, Apple is 18. Yes. And I have a junior in high school, Moses is 16. Time goes so fast. I know. It's crazy. It's so crazy. I mean, when you look back at the time with your children, what, what, so my kids are like 11, eight and five. Is there any particular age or time that you look at as being particularly special? What was your favorite age? Was it like toddlers, babies, now? I have to say, I've loved every single stage and every stage I thought like, oh, I wish I could freeze time. Like, I'm never gonna love them more than this. And then you just love them more. Yeah. Your son is exceptional. By the way, he told me that you drove him home I one did. day from his dad's. Yes. Thank what? you yes. so much. I gave him a lift home. Did you and guys sing? No, we, no we, we talked only about music. Of course. I gave him a lift home. We talked only about music. And he got out of the car, and me and Jules were like, well, he's the coolest person I think we've oh, ever met. Thank yeah, you. He was, he was well, really great. Thank you. Well, he, 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 he thought you were the coolest Uber driver he's ever had. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Now, so uh, Apple's gone to college. How are you handling the notion of an impending empty nest? Not very well. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Not very well. I'm going to be at Hillary's house. Like, I was just I'm... going to say, come over. Just uh, hand me one. Come over. <laughs> There's but, plenty to go around. I know. I mean, how does it feel in the house with Apple gone? Is it, is it a huge change? It's a huge change because she's really hilarious and she's just got like a you. big. <laughs> she's got a big presence, and um, so when we're around the dinner table now, people, if somebody comes over and they say to Moses you know, what is it like with your sister not home? And he's like, quiet. Oh. oh. I know. Well, you can go to Hillary's I know, and but it's going to be quite be the quiet. commute. Because last time you were on the show, Hillary, it was on Zoom, and you just moved into your new home yeah. in Colorado. I remember you showed us it was completely oh. empty and everything. Mm -hmm. Have you settled in? Finally. Are you enjoying being there? Is there anything you miss from living in Los Angeles? Um, I miss playing tennis. You, uh, don't, you can't play tennis. I live at 9,600 feet. Wow. And the ball flies. <laughs> it, it just flies. You have to play with kid, like the kids who learn how to play tennis, those little balls, and they do the same thing that normal balls do. Wow. Yeah. So hang on, when you hit it, it just goes for ages. Ages. I'm just going to say to that's like my to Mars. Reason. That's what I'm like playing tennis. You're like, anyway, are we at altitude right now? It's the altitude, guys. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, I love tennis. I'm obsessed with it. So. But how often do you get back to LA? What's that commute like? <clears throat> Colorado to LA feels challenging. It is. I mean, I have, uh, you know, as you know, my rescue dogs, my parrots. Bert made a, an appearance on our last mm. talk show, um, and um, I have two parrots, five five rescue dogs. So, um, well, I was 
I got a pilot's license during COVID and was like flying, um, but it's a little prop plane. It's like, <laughs> and um, it won't fit five dogs, two parrots, and two babies. No. So now I'm actually um, looking into buying a retired band bus. Ooh, oh, nice that's idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Let... Swank's on tour. Yeah, we just have to like, you guys could help me figure out like what the side mural will be. Just, just paint it in cocaine. <laughs> so people are like, that must be Hope a you really might find it cool inside that, rock band. You know? Yeah. Now Get I wanna... Willie Nelson's and the kids <laughs> will have a contact high. Now, I want to talk about this. You both came up in the late 90s, which is having quite the renaissance at the moment, the fashion, the music. What was it like for both of you being so famous at a time when there was no social media, no nothing? What do you remember about that time? Greg? You, you, you won your Academy Award in 1999? I think so. Because I think I was right after you in 2000. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were really famous in the 90s. I wasn't. You were famous in the 90s. No, because Boys Don't Cry came out in 1999. So, oh. I mean, unless you call the next Karate Kid and all that. Right. But what was it like? like that I can't imagine it was, it was amazing. I mean, talk about doing cocaine and not getting caught. <laughs> <laughs> Like just, you could just be at a bar and you'd be like having fun, dance on a table. You could no camera you know, phones. No, right. no camera phones. Like you could, especially in New York. Interestingly enough, there were no paparazzi. Like you could stumble out of a bar and go home with some rando, and <laughs> no one would know. Now, Gwyneth, let's talk about your brilliant new Audible original, oh. The Goop Pursuit. Okay. Uh, tell us what it is, and what was it that inspired you to do this series? Well, I think at Goop, we're always trying to find like interesting ways to, with content to reach new audiences and to kind of move culture forward and have interesting or precipitate interesting conversations. And so this is um, an audio series. It's four parts and it's on Audible. Um, and, and they've been great because, you know, I love the, I love listen, I'm a big podcast listener too. Mm. And I've, I've gotten into, I still like reading books on, I mean, books like real paper books. Mm -hmm. but you said books on tape. I know. <laughs> what was that? But I, I really do love listening. And, and, and what's great, and on Audible, they have all these cool series, and they're kind of deep dives. So these are 90-minute, um, you know, seri auto, audio, audio series mm. um, on different topics. Like the first one is on pleasure. Um, because I think we have such an interesting, weird relationship with pleasure in our culture, especially women. Like, we're so freaked out to have pleasure. Not mm. only sexual pleasure, but just like, oh, yeah. you know. Um, and on transitions, and really amazing hosts. And yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. It comes out Thursday. It comes out on Thursday. All four parts of the Good Pursuit are available this Thursday exclusively on Audible. Stick around. More with these two when we come back, everybody. <laughs>